Let's see how many people are awake tonight. Especially given that it's two o'clock in the morning. Hello Leslie, nice to see you straight up on the mark. Uh, well, it's not so sunny here, it's 2 o'clock in the morning and I uh, realised I had this job to do and it was Monday tomorrow morning, well I should say in a few hours. So, But the weather is nice here, it's nice cool weather, well, when I say cool I mean about 15 to 20 degrees. How's things over in Scotland? Go okay, Rick, 16.05, great time for a stream. Ah, hello, Seven Oaks. In a while. Alrighty. Hopefully we won't make a complete feck up like um, I did last night. Uh, Basically I've got this HP in here, um, supposedly a no boot issue. Last night's was a no boot issue as well, or at least not turning on or something, but yeah, that didn't turn out to be the case. So let's see what's going on. Let's get some power into this. Yeah, Rick, that uh, screen last night was a bit of a pain. I mean, when I was looking at it, as you probably watched, there were so many indications that I was dealing with the touch screen, and I just ignored them all. And you know, so I went back over the uh, quotes I'd done for that one, and it turns out I have that's already a pre approved quote, so I'll lose a little bit of money, but not too bad. Like, I'm still going to make money, but not as much as I thought I would. That's okay, it's my own fault. What have we got? Okay, Lynn. Flash Jazz Cat. Haven't seen you before. Hi from the UK where it's muggy and it's time for tea. I would love a cup of tea right now, except it's 2 o'clock in the morning. And I've just noticed my camera is not synchronizing correctly. It's on. For some reason, this camera always comes up as. Uh, 60 hertz filtering. It's supposed to be 50 hertz. Right, that stopped it. Good. Uh, just reading the chat. It's boiling here in Mallorca. Spain. Okay, let's see. Oh, Martin Law, Sony MBX two three seven. I hate those model laptops. I haven't tried one of those MBX two three sevens. I have done a few Sony jobs, and yeah, it looks like we've got a definite hard drive foul going on here. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can read it. There we go. Boot device not found. Please install operating system on your hard drive. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is boot up from the Linux recovery, well, test disk, and see if we can get any activity on that hard drive. Tears in dinner, oh yeah, they'll catch me out. And then there's supper, and there's dinner dinner. Flash Jazz Cat, same thing happens on my Logitech, 60 hertz every time I start. Yeah, it's. I, I think what's happening is the camera boots to that as a default. Now, there is a tool I've got here on Linux which allows me to upload the settings to the camera. So I think maybe I should uh, put that in the startup script or something. Save me having to change it every time. 
but at least it's fairly obvious when it is playing up because yeah, I can see the banding going on on the screen. Yes, dinner. Ah, uh, looks like I failed at my uh, European talk. Oh well. 11 degrees. Okay, Greg. 11 degrees here and raining at Winnipeg, Canada. That sounds like lovely weather, actually. My kind of weather. Okay. Let's see if we can actually make this... I'm probably going to have to change... Let's see. At least with the HPs, I know it's F10. I don't know if any of you have noticed uh, with new repairs that we're starting to get laptops that will refuse to do absolutely anything unless there is a hard drive in there. I had a Lenovo, I think it was the other day, and I'd taken the hard drive out and I was just wanting to boot to check a few things and it just simply comes up the screen and says no hard drive present, press enter to continue and that was it. You, you couldn't get into the BIOS that I was aware of, which is a bit of a nuisance. I mean, I've got plenty of hard drives floating around, so... Okay... This, oh, there we go. Maybe it was just a timing thing, maybe I had to wait a bit longer, but... I certainly don't make it easy. Let's see, boot options. Give me a five second boot. USB boot, secure boot. No thanks. Legacy support. CSM. Yes. Marvelous. Let's go for that. The Flash Jazz Cat. Uh, if you. Oh, 3754. 3754. Okay. What do I get? In? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Flashcat. There's a program under Linux called um, V4L2UCP, and it allows you to save the settings of your camera into just a little text file, and then you can re-upload them as well. Let's see, I call it dinner. If you want to start a real fight in the UK, ask folk what they call a roll. Oh yeah, bun bap, yeah, okay. <laughs> so many ways you can start fights. Hey, hi hi 217, nice to see you. Is that a bug in the EFI disk search possibly? I'm not sure, Lynn. I don't know, I mean, half the time you wonder whether it is a bug or whether they're deliberately doing that to stop you from doing anything with these laptops. I mean, worst case scenario, you physically take it out and do it. Well, the screen's dimmer than I'd expect. I probably really shouldn't even be streaming at this time. I should be going to bed. But I spent the last couple of hours going through all my iPhone screens, uh, just sorting them out working out which ones I can get refurbished, which ones need to go back for refund or replacement. And I realised I am terrible at this side of business doing the warranty RMA jobs. I had RMAs done out that are over 12 months old, which means they're actually now no good because the uh, supplier gives me 12 months warranty on the parts. I didn't send them back, and even though they've got a RMA number for them, it's expired. So that was really dumb. That's a good way to lose money. Yeah, I've got to kick myself for that. But there's a bunch of others that I've got which are duds, so I'll still send them in tomorrow. Now, this screen's really dull. Let's see if I can brighten it up. Probably won't be able to. Mm -hmm. yeah, no brightness control, even with the function. No, nothing. That's unfortunate. I'll turn this off. Nah, that doesn't really help a hell of a lot. Uh, well, I'm just going to run DD Rescue and see what comes up. 
huge. Actually, I'll see if anything comes up with the SCSI uh, SATA drives. Well, it's picking up a 500 gig drive. I wonder if it's just got an OS issue. X0 P16 device SDA null. Let's see, here we go. Hey, Mike. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking as well. I thought if I've blown them on the replacement, then at least I can send them in for a um, refurb. And yeah, we've got a dud hard drive here, but it is reading, so that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'll take it out and then I can put it into the recovery server and it will extract what it can. I only got um, I only got 5 megs in and I'm already crashing into issues. So alright, we'll shut this down and we'll pull this machine apart. Unfortunately, I don't need to pull the screen apart in this one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to assume that's supposed to say Christos Christos, but you're using an X to be interesting. Hello from Greece. You're doing an excellent job and your voice is soothing in comparison to Lewis Rossman's. <laughs> you will make Lewis Rossman rage if he hears that. <laughs> what do you find unpleasant about Lewis Rossman's voice? Is it the American accent or is it something else? Yeah, I just got to get a foam. There we go. A foam pad. Tears up, so I'll catch you later. Okay, Flash Jazz Cat, thank you for partic jumping in. It's nice to see you. See. Lynn Nash, I hate doing RMA. Always lazy refunk. Yep, exactly, Lynn. I am the same. I think uh, the year before, I probably blew about almost a thousand dollars worth of RMAs. Uh, it's bad because when you're getting a good run of jobs, you don't really care, you just sort of go, ah, oh, it's a dud, you know, and the, and the profits are coming in, so you don't mind. And then the th work starts to dry up, and you realise you've got all your RMAs, and you're like, oh, that's money just sitting there. Yeah. I'm bad for that, like, I always have been bad for that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's one of my weaknesses. I need to work on it, because it does cost me money, and when I think about it, uh, hopefully I will get enough from the RMAs to potentially order that microscope that I want. Let's see. Rick Fundermark. By the way, is it Fundermark or do you prefer Vandermark? Because personally for me it's Fundermark. Like a new bench setup, by the way, I'm currently redoing my own workspace using Rails. So Reganos. I was going to use Rails. Uh, I have a couple of dozen of those strips and a couple of dozen of the uh, the arms that come out but I used them all throughout this house for so many years that I eventually just got sick of the side of them and I ripped them all down they're all in the workshop I should just clean them up sell them off to someone local and they'll be happy they get some cheap shelving so. So, Flash Jazzy, thanks for the tip, Paul. Been using V4L yeah, UCP, seems to work well. Yeah, yeah certainly as a, um interactive application, it's good. And then I found that it had the storage and recovery of the settings, which made it extra useful. Now, unfortunately, this laptop, like so many new laptops, is a pain in the ass, and I have to rip it open to get to the hard drive. I don't know why they can't give us a panel. I mean, come on. How hard is it? They've already got the screws here. Let's see. Richter van der Mark. I just wish marriage upon him. Personally, I like listening to Lewis. I learn a lot from him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I learn quite a lot from him. I enjoy watching him for the fact that uh, when he does his repairs, it's almost like doing them yourself 
and therefore you acquire the experience of going through all of the you know of that work without having to risk anything so I find that very convenient and I think I watched probably a couple of dozen of his videos and then I did my own first couple of MacBooks and just having that knowledge of what to expect and what to do and it helps so much Christoph says sometimes he just rages is out of control though he is so uncom unconventional person like me but to be honest who likes Apple products anyway <laughs> well I like the Apple products for the same reason that Lewis predominantly does and that is it's um, good business and uh, so this is going to be, this is one of those, I can't quite take the bottom off, so it pretends to be a simple MacBook. That's the other thing, oh sweet Bridget, it's a, oh, I hate these. I hate this uh, new style, I mean I know it's been around for a while, but more and more laptops are doing it, where they integrate the keyboard into the whole top deck. I hate it because if something goes wrong with the keyboard you've got to replace the whole top deck and you usually can't get the top deck and unlike the MacBooks you can't really just redo the rivets on these ones I mean you can try but they're plastic and everything and they're just it's a disaster I've tried it several times in the end I just find it's easier to go into Alibaba and order a whole new replacement top deck. Anything else is basically borderline insanity. Both work, last one matches best, but fine either way. Lots of people call Mark too. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Outsource the RMAs to the wife, that's not a bad idea, John. <laughs> Lewis reminds me of Rocket Raccoon voice and <laughs> Lynn, I probably should go watch that again now and see if uh, see if that happens to me when I watch it. Christos Demiopoulos. The company I work for, we give warranty in store for all HP laptops except the 250 series. Oh, lovely. And this is a 250, yeah. So yeah, I can understand. This is the G one, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the DV. Oh god, yeah. Do you have a video on data recovery tone? On tone wire? Is it Tony? Anyway, I'm going to assume either. I do have a few different videos on data recovery, and they're basically all with Linux using DD Rescue. Now I should probably think a little bit about what I'm doing here. I don't want to repeat last night. Mike Lazan, well, I'm cleaning the back of the shop and we'll watch later. Don't stay up late. Thank you, Mike. I will try to heed your advice and not stay up late. I really just want to get this hard drive out. And once the hard drive's out, I'll take it to the other room where my recovery servers are. And I'll put it in there, start the process, and let it run overnight. Uh, this thing's got a... You're not going to be able to see it on camera, but I've got a crack here on the edge of the main bathtub so yeah that's not good hey Scott Pinder what price range is this laptop this is that's a good question actually I think they're about no more than 400 Australian dollars so you gotta have a really good reason for spending money on it these are these do feel like disposable laptops Something's hooking here. I've got all my screws out. It's probably just a latch, but uh, I'm a bit paranoid tonight. Can you blame me after last night? I've opened up these 250s before, and I don't know why this one's giving me grief. 
Admittingly, I haven't actually had this particular one. Okay. I've got to go from this side and come up, I'm pretty sure. Get you right down. Ah, uh, that, or it actually just has to... I think what I have to do is close her up, like so, and then come up this way. Maybe therefore there is no panel in the hive. Sure, a stupid design to, do to get the hard drive and not dispose. Yeah. They only, things only give grief yeah, in your life. Yeah. Alright, yeah, I can see what's happened to this laptop. I just noticed it then. Um, let's see. Hopefully, I'm not going to blind you guys. But I'm sure you can. You can see the corner damage there. So yeah, we've got a dropped hard, uh, dropped laptop. See how the trouble with doing these jobs at night is you often don't see a lot of the stuff that's gone wrong, which is not good. It's because you're on live stream; it doesn't come off easily. Hi, hi, two one seven. You are absolutely right. Greg M just threw the laptop away. I would tend to agree with you, Greg. So you get the data off and throw it away. I don't even know what CPU this one has got. Someone want to find out? It's a... Uh, the actual product code is W5T31PT hash ABG. The fact that it doesn't have i3 or i5 or anything else on the front would tend to indicate to me that it's a lowly Pentium or something. Yep, there we go. Knew there was something holding me back. Sneaky bastards. Screws, screws. The Art of Repair. The Art of Repair. I think I've heard of your name around somewhere, but my apologies for not exactly knowing. Perhaps I'm here for comic relief. <laughs> ah. Yeah, Martin, you're about 10 seconds late on that one. But by the time you hear this, you'll see that I've already done it. Okay, in that case, it's going to be a top deck lift out, maybe. N3060 Celeron. Yeah, definitely a trash machine then. See, for as much as people mock Apple, at least the MacBooks, when you you can pop them open and they actually open up. Yeah, it's just that one panel on the back. I'm sure, I mean, it's got annoying screws, those pentalobes and whatnot, but uh, at least it does come apart. I'm pretty sure this is going to be screened down and shell back. Yeah, out of repair, we all certainly start out small. God knows I'm still pretty tiny here. And if I don't get this apart, I'm probably going to stay tiny forever now. <laughs> well, this is confusing. According to the latches back here, it's almost like I should lift up the front and pull forwards. Yeah, it's the old, the 3060 is an old one, yeah. 
they do have some nice Celeron models now I've seen with the uh, some of the motherboards I really like to get are those uh, mini ITX main boards I use them for my recovery servers and they've got some pretty decent chips in them now like integrated ones not the socketed clip around the hinges um, Greg do you mean like when it's uh, opened up like this or when it's um, closed up because I know this is going to have to come out this way or the respective action on the back shell because otherwise I can't get the VGA connector out. Do you anything about live streams for me? For other people's that I want to be involved, always want to come and help repair things, whoever I see streaming. Yeah, when uh, when Lewis started streaming when he you know first proposed that that's what he was gonna do, I was like, oh no man, I love your fixed format. I don't want to have to you know be streaming with a bunch of people and then he started streaming and I was like holy crap you know I actually really enjoy this I did not expect I would enjoy this so that was a bit of a shocker for me and now I really much prefer his um, streams rather than pre-done videos someone told me I do not have to take the screen off I had a laptop about two months ago and the only way to get on the inside was to take the screen off um, like you had, there was no way to get that top deck out without the screen coming off just wait for Zen processors on netbooks and the yeah, it'd be very interesting to see whether AMD can get the Zen to small profiles like that Greg, can you describe to me what you believe is the action required? Because what's confusing me here is that if I lift this up, somehow it's got a... Ah, oh, here we go. Got it. We have a winner. That took way too long power of live streaming. It's almost like the power of politics. Make everything take twice as long and cost a buttload more. Pianov's in here. Pianov, Pianov. Da, da, da. Yeah, you're talking about whether they can get the Zen to perform adequately? inside a laptop format. Yeah, I'm worried about the thermals. AMD has always been a little bit because of their uh, they're always a process down or two on the Intels. So they've got to sacrifice a fair bit of performance in order to be able to manage the heat problem. And we have a HGST so we may have a good chance of data recovery there. They're fairly durable drives. What have we got here? Four gigabytes. PC3L. <clears throat> so, at least you know for next time. Now, that's all I'm ever doing these days. Is I'm always. Oh yeah, that's the problem with the PCs. Is that you probably. I'd say, well, for me, probably about 80% of the laptops I get in here I never see again, uh, unless it's something like a Toshiba, uh, well, it was the A300, like the Toshiba C665s and whatnot, lots of those, mm, pardon me, but uh, the last few years it's just been a massive, massive selection of different laptops and nothing really coming back to us. 
20 watts is enormous in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Uh, on a laptop, you probably don't want to be burning off more than 15, 10, 15 watts on average. The out of repair. What was the initial check-in issue? I came in late. Uh, basically, it comes up with no boot device. And yeah, so I, when I did boot and check the with Linux Ubuntu, it showed up straight away that there were issues with the hard drive. The hard drive does read, but it's got bad sectors right away. So I'm going to take this over to the recovery machine and yeah, get that data off. The person may perhaps go for a solid state replacement, which I hope they do. Otherwise, I'll probably just go for data recovery only. Something like photos or whatever. Alright. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I was going to say I could go into the other room, put it in the recovery server, and then I can secure shell in from this machine and do the process. But what are we at? Yeah, we're at 2.30 already, so I'm getting a bit late. So, dropped as per half the stuff here. So, yes, it's been dropped, yep. I do think live streams have the benefit of interaction in chats with low cancer content, of course. Let me know if you ever want to mod. Right. Yes, the cancer content in Rossman streams is quite severe, and... It's backed off lately, but of course every now and then we do get a flare up that uh, the people like TCRS and the others, they're pretty quick on cutting that cancer out. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, Stray 77. Stray 77, I'm assuming you're going, phew, because I got it off eventually. Laptop fans, cheapest part requires total disassembly to replace. Oh god, yeah. Oh, speaking of which, um, oh, oh, they've, yep. Thank you, HP. No, I just noticed there's no fan on this one. Wow. I suppose it is only. Where is there? Like we've got the slots here for the fan but if you have a look at it that's where the slots line up and if I look in there there's no radiator all it's doing on this particular laptop is this whole assembly here will be the heat sink and it's just dissipating just um, through ambient which makes this laptop pretty much complete crap for the weather we have here if you get a day of 40 degrees, or let's say a 100 plus F, and this laptop's going to suffer. Oh well. Have you ever thought of doing a video on how to use DD Rescue uh, from Scott? Yes, I actually have done a couple of them, but they're not like a tutorial type thing. It's more a case of, hey, I'm going to use DD Rescue here to get the data off. I think of DD Rescue, it's a very good tool and you sort of have to understand what's going wrong with the hard drive sometimes to be able to work your way out of some tricky situations which is why I have um, you saw the other night I was building the relays the internal relays and it's why I have those sort of tools so that when D Rescue needs a bit of a helping hand to get the data off then things are those relays come into hand. For the complicated jobs, and this one may be one of those, I often have to write scripts that uh, will manipulate how DD Rescue works depending on what sort of failure this hard drive is suffering. Uh, you'll get some that after two gigs of data they'll shut down, or you'll get others that after five minutes of transfer they'll shut down. Or you'll get ones where the data rate will start out pretty good initially and then it will just taper off down to about 64k a second. So fortunately as these obscure type faults come up I can usually talk to the creator of DD Rescue, Antonio, and or if he's not available I'll code it in myself. 
and subsequently now DD Rescue has a lot of features in it that allow you to terminate or manipulate the behavior depending on what sort of behavior you're expecting out of this hard drive. Most of the time it's a case of you just put the drive in, you run DD Rescue and the next morning or whatever it's done its job or whatever. But every now and then you get the odd challenge, which I must admit I do enjoy, as long as I get the data off. So, better look at chat. Let's see. Fix it up. Hi Paul, what kind of machine is required for data recovery of hard drives? Can you advise? I have used um, Raspberry Pi 2s to do data recovery in certain situations. If it's a lot less than 64 meg, uh, gigs or something like that, and I just put it on a little stick. Otherwise, pretty much any PC, like even lowly um, atoms, they're perfectly fine. There's, DD Rescue does not use a lot of CPU power. Most of the work is all in the um, all in the I/O chipsets and whatnot. Most of the time, you're just sitting around waiting for the hard drive to get data out. So there's pretty much anything from an Atom, so long as you've got your um, serial ATA interface or whatever you require. USB 3 does help if you're trying to dump to an external drive. Um, I couple my, I have in my recovery machines usually 8 terabyte Seagate SMR drives. Um, I find if I've got, if the drives are too small then I tend to run out of space really quickly with the number of jobs that come through here. So 8 terabytes are a nice size. Hi Hi217, that was because the TCRS and Amy have banned all the cancer already. Yeah, that's true, they're pretty vicious. <laughs> More PADS videos are in production. Art of Repair, when you're saying PADS, are you talking about the um, EDA package, like the board view design schematic and things like that because I'm trying to get my hands on the binary uh, pads PCB file format specification I'm trying to reverse engineer it but it's one of those tasks where you pretty much got to set aside a month or two and nitpick your way through so if anybody out there can accidentally not send me the binary specification uh, the file format specification for the pads PCB files um, that would be very very inappropriate to do and would be dreadful because you would all of a sudden then allow people all over the world to read iPhone and iPad type uh, board views that they're not supposed to through open board view and of course that would bring me into disrepute of course rather than having to buy ZXW so uh, wouldn't want to do that That's, oh looks like Twitch chat is less cancerous because less people know about it. That's true enough. Yeah, the Twitch chat is much better because yeah, it's the IRC type interface. Out of repair. I'm out at Tuscan, Arizona in the USA. I know what you mean about the heat. Yeah, Tuscan's pretty bad. 30 minutes from Mexico. Ugh, yeah. Okay, fix it up. I already answered that one. People like Paul should recode YouTube chat. You know, I'd love to write a YouTube chat application because it it's close right now, they've nearly got it right, but they do have to yeah, sort out a few more things. Would love to have a dedicated YouTube client, but I don't want to code it. Yeah, I agree, Pianoff. <laughs> yeah, but you needn't worry about the location search button OB, uh, in Open Broadview. Now, that, uh, that search interface for Open Broadview still annoys me, it just does, because when I use it, even though I coded it, I still naturally am doing things different to what uh, it's coded like. So to me that indicates it's not done right. Uh, maybe it's just me, but uh, one thing that does get me is when, say, Lewis or anyone is trying to search for five or six resistors and they're all, say, R915 prefix, so like 9151, 9152, etc. something. Um, in Open Boardview, you can just go R915 and it'll show you all the resistors that are prefixed with that and solve the problem. But anyway, yeah, let's see. The outer repair. If I ever come across that information, I'll let you know for sure. I currently use, yeah, mental pads. That's it. Yep. 
Yeah, uh, the mentor pads program is what I've been suggesting people use in the interim, and I see quite a few have taken that up. So it's good to see you're using it as well. You probably, how long you've been doing that? Quite a while, I imagine. Um, it would be nice to get it under Open Board View as well, just so that um, the people in Linux and Mac OS can use it. So, but at least there is that option for people who are using Windows, and most people are using Windows. So that covers the greater portion of the market at this point. I can't trust ZXW. Easy to get locked out of your tools. And wasn't there a uh, wasn't there some malware in ZXW recently? I seem to recall something about that. So yeah, that that's always been a concern. The fact that it's always actively on and it won't work unless you've got the internet. And sure enough, someone decided it was a good idea to start draining information out of people's machines. Uh, let's see, flick that off. Yeah, that's good. Uh, da -da. Station 240, yeah, fix the scrolling. Yeah, with the YouTube chat, I agree. It's a real nuisance, and I get caught out plenty of times. The other thing is the autocomplete. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't with the user nicknames. So. And overall, it just feels sluggish. Uh, for Twitch, I go in through HexChat, which is just an IRC client. It just feels so much quicker. But I have found that a lot of the people currently doing Twitch and YouTube, they do still seem to read the YouTube quite a bit more than they say they should. So. Yeah, backdoor keystroke logger exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, I'm not sure what uh, malware was in the ZXW, and if it was in fact actually in the ZXW. But uh, Blackfish, yeah, wasn't that the FBI one? A lot of free data from people who think they are using safe software. Oh God, yeah, yep, yeah. That, <clears throat> like I said, that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to get. Open board view to support them as quick as I can because it will provide that sense of security. I mean, the source code's there, it doesn't require the internet, so I mean, at least you can just pull the network cable out or disconnect the Wi Fi. So many devices at risk. Yeah, quite right. Some of the pads board views are wrong, which is why I had to purchase that XW. Scott, in what way are they coming up wrong? Is it just rendered wrong or information wrong or something? Because the Mentor Pads program, as far as I understand, is built by the people who did the Pads PDF files. So if there's a defect in the uh, rendering, I suspect maybe it's in the conversion that they made to go from the iPhone original files or something. But I thought the PCB files were one of the original sources. Oh well. More of the community is on YouTube chat, so I get why they would read YouTube more. I agree, hi hi. Um I was thinking the same thing, like when there was a proposition that they wouldn't look at the YouTube chat anymore. But then 4chan or Reddit, whatever came along, we had like twelve, fourteen hundred people on there. It was inevitable that we'd drift back to looking at YouTube. We never install ZXW tools on the same subnet LAN as other business machines. Absolutely agree. Yeah, but isolate from other boxes. Yeah, and fire all the hell out of it so it's. Um, though you don't know what they're sending in the back channel, uh, back up when you're downloading those uh, files every time. 5C, some of the ground pads are switched. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, oh, well, long live virtualization plus manager network. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, I think, um, I'm sorry this is going to be a short one, but at least we managed to get the laptop open without killing it. I'm very happy about that. It's amazing, you yeah, know, when you smash a few things, your standards start dropping down pretty low, so you get happy about anything. So I'll go put this in the recovery server, and it will run, by the looks of it, it's probably going to run for a couple of days, judging on how quickly that data is damaged. My guess is the heads themselves are damaged so I will have to probably direct it to... I'll look at how big the uh, various petitions are and I'll make it go straight for the Windows petition and start at about 20 gigs in 
because most of the time with Windows it's about a 20 gig install, or 10 to 20. So if you start from there onwards, you can pick up most of the data. You'll also want to pick up the uh, NTFS uh, allocation file allocation tables as well, otherwise you'll have to do file recovery using carving methods such as photo rec and whatnot. Anyway, but if you go for the important areas first, such as where the data is and where the file allocation tables are, then you can come back to the less important areas later, particularly if you're worried about your heads failing or something like that. Now, of course, yeah, a lot of people say we'll send it to a uh, clean room recovery centre, and that's true, you would. But the trouble is, you've got a person here with a three, four hundred dollar laptop, and you say to them, "Well, yeah, your data's going to cost you twelve hundred bucks to go get clean room recovered." They're just going to straight away say no. And to date, they pretty much all do. Even with the expensive laptops, I find most people will not spend the money to go to a clean room. Um, when I hear, "I really want to get my photos off here," they're irreplaceable, which is true. Uh, they're completely, totally valuable to me and everything. Uh, I really want them no matter what. And then you come back and you say, well, yeah, it's a thousand bucks to go get it sent off to clean room. They're like, oh, no, I don't really need those photos anymore. So, yeah, people's um, perception of what is um, valuable usually seems to, at least around here, tops out at about 200 bucks. See you later, Christos Demopoulos. Alright, okay. Yep, so I'm finishing up. Uh, yeah, short one. But uh, yeah, sooner or later I'm going to have to do a proper video as in an edited one and put it up. I've got a couple of things I'm planning. In the meantime, I'm just being lazy and doing these live streams. But it's been a nice sort of change and setting up all the different things here so at least I've got both formats available now and of course I wanted to try out this uh, IB I keep saying IBM because uh, I mean Lenovo the E550 that I repaired and it's doing pretty good so I wish I could drop the encoding down to super fast rather than ultra fast but it's an i5 fifth generation so maybe it just doesn't quite have the power to get there Pianov, by the way, I came across a post of yours and hate... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever manage to build something? No, I didn't. What happened there was I could see that hard drives were starting to get pushed out of the market and were being replaced by solid-state drives. And around about that time, I was getting back into the electronics repairs. And I just decided, no, I'm not going to spend the couple of thousand dollars on a clean room uh, system. Like, even if I built it myself, by the time you get something up and running properly, you're going to have lost, well, not lost, but you would have invested close to $1,000 to get it going. Does DD Rescue read the smart data? No, it doesn't. Uh, it just goes straight for the actual bits on the drive, like the platters. It doesn't do anything with the um, internal state of the controller or anything like that. Oh, g'day, John. Over to 8. Yeah, John, I actually want to get one of those iPhone Universal um, holder devices that you have a video on. They look really good. And I like the fact that they were a Universal one. Rather, I've seen plenty of the others are just dedicated to the 6 or the 5 or whatever. So, um, yeah, I want to get one of those Universal ones. I've just got to get around to buying it off that link you've got. Let's see. Well, nice to meet Paul. Definitely like this channel. Hopefully, you'll check my stuff out. Yes, Art of Repair. I will. Like I said, I've seen your name go past and a few other things, so at least now that I've bumped into you, or you've bumped into me, I'll go and chase that up. So, alright, well, yep, off to bed. Well, after I put this in. And I'll catch up with you guys later, and girls. Thank you very much for participating, and I'll see you next time.